So in just under a month, the AutoBleam team has released version 0.7 Ultimate. Not only does this version have various bug fixes and code cleanup by Axanar, but we have some very huge updates not only to AutoBleam, but to the PlayStation Classic scene itself. So in this video, I'm only going to focus on what was updated for this version. If you want to know what's been included since version 0.6 Beta 3, I have a video showcasing all the options. I'll have that linked in my description. So one of the first changes you can see here is that the Air GB theme has been updated by Rubik's Cube 6. Many more language updates have been made. They're included in the README. The About screen has been updated and now shows everybody that has been involved with the AutoBleam project. So a huge thank you to everybody on this list. So if we hit select to go into the options menu, the first change we see is down at the bottom. We now have OK and cancel options with hitting the X and circle buttons respectively. Meaning if you make a change here and then you hit circle, it will not save that option. You have to hit X. So it might take a little bit to get used to those new options. If we go into one of the games menus, you see that option is not there yet. That will be included in a future release. You can now load any PlayStation game directly to RetroArch by hitting the square button. And now RetroArch started up. If we hit start and select, there's our RetroArch menu. That also means that any game settings that you have saved here are transferred over to RetroArch unless you have some core override options selected. But things like high res or widescreen will transfer over if you want to run your games in RetroArch. We have a couple changes made to the PCSX menu by hitting select and triangle. You can now save your config settings through AutoBleam. So any changes you make in this menu will now be saved. We now have a quick save and quick load option. And it works very well. Just hit select and triangle, hit quick save, and now say I want to get that hand down there. That was a mistake. So we go back into the menu, quick load, and you start right up. One of the two larger updates in this release is for the memory card manager. Not only is it working now, but it's had a huge overhaul. You can see now you have memory cards in the player one and player two slots. And the second memory card can be replaced by a custom card like the first one. Just hit the start button and then you would select whichever custom card you've made. Some new options at the bottom. You can see that select will defragment your memory card. You can hit the X button to reload your cards and then you can delete and copy saves. So say we go to Rayman, we want to copy that to card number two you just hit the square button and it's copied instantly. You can create multiple copies if you want to and then to delete them quickly you just highlight them and hit the triangle button. Now if you accidentally erase your game save just hit circle to go back and you have a confirmation screen before any changes take effect. If you made a mistake just hit circle to go to cancel you'll be taken back to this menu but if we go back into the memory card manager you'll see your save is just fine. And now this last new feature is huge. It is one of the biggest updates we've seen to the PlayStation Classic scene in a while. And that's the ability to play games from different systems like Super Nintendo or Game Boy directly from the Evo UI menu. So to do that, you have to make a playlist within RetroArch for your games. So using RetroBoot within the PlayStation Classic, you can create game playlists. And it is the recommended method if you don't have a lot of games you're trying to scan. But if you're somebody who likes to have the entire library on your system, I'll show you another way to do that. What you want to do is go down to Import Content. You're going to Scan Directory. Hit X on Parent Directory, and this gives you what is on the root of your flash drive. Now, all my games are in this ROMs folder. I didn't create any subdirectories, but you can do that if you want. And then you just select scan this directory. Now, I think I have about 50 games in this folder. This takes a while, but you do see at the bottom, you have a notification letting you know how far along the scan is. So if you don't have that many games, this isn't really that bad. But like I said, if you're doing hundreds of games, you're going to want to go a different route. And there you can see at the bottom that it finished scanning the directory. So now if we go back to the main menu, you see we have a couple new playlists here. So that was about 50 games that took maybe five or six minutes. Now I'm going to quit out of RetroArch, go back to the Evo UI menu. So now if we hold the L2 button and hit select, we have a new menu here. This allows you to select those playlists directly from your AutoBleam user interface. So we're going to select our Nintendo playlist. And here are the Nintendo games that we just added. But as you can see, this list is lackluster. We kind of need the box art. So before we move any further with this, we need to add some thumbnails. All right, so here's our flash drive we use with the PlayStation Classic. If you want to know how to get this set up to work correctly, just check my old video. I go through the step-by-step -step instructions on how to set this up. So a couple things I have to show you before we get started adding the thumbnail files. We're going to go into our RetroArch folder and then down to playlists. These are the LPL files or your playlist files. It's very important you look at how they are named. Nintendo dash Game Boy Color LPL 
or Nintendo Dash Nintendo Entertainment System. So if you're planning on adding whole ROM sets or just a lot of games to your menu, this is the Windows version of RetroArch. Now I want to show you how fast this version creates the playlist. Just go to the settings option, down to playlists, scan directory, and you're going to navigate to wherever you keep your ROMs. So now watch how fast this goes when I click scan this directory. Just a little bit faster than the PlayStation Classic. So it took about five or six minutes to scan 50 games and it's finished scanning. That only took about two minutes to scan almost 2,700 games. So if you don't have that many games or you have a lot of patience, you can use the PlayStation Classic scanner. Otherwise, I recommend using the Windows version of RetroArch. Now where you have to go to find that playlist you just created, go into your RetroArch folder. And the setup here is gonna look very similar to what you have on your flash drive for your PlayStation Classic. Just go into the playlist folder and there you are, the LPL file that we're looking for. So there's one last very important step you have to do if you're creating a playlist from the Windows RetroArch. And that is this right here. You have to change the path that is in your playlist. So this is the path that I want here. This is where my ROMs are. This is incorrect. If you were to just copy the playlist over to your flash drive, it won't work because it's looking for the ROMs in the wrong directory. But it's actually extremely easy to change this. You just need a program called Notepad++. This is our playlist that we created with our Windows version of RetroArch. We're going to right click that, edit with Notepad++. So as you can see here, this is the incorrect directory. This will not work if we add this to our flash drive. You need to copy what comes after these quotation marks and before your game name. So we need all this highlighted. After you've highlighted that spot, go up to search, down to replace. And you'll see here the highlighted portion has been added to the find what spot in this box because I have my games in just the ROMs folder on my flash drive. This is what I'm going to change it to. If you put your games in a subdirectory like NES, just make sure you put that backslash right after it. Make sure you click replace all. That's very important. Not just replace, replace all. It's going to find every single one of those in the document to change. So we click replace all. And now you see everything has been changed to the correct directory. Close the replace box. Make sure you save. It's very important you save at the very end or none of this will save. Now if we open up our playlist file one more time, right click, edit with notepad++, everything saved correctly. Right click, copy on your AutoBleam flash drive, go into RetroArch, Playlists, and then Paste. So it's a little extra work to use the Windows version of RetroArch, but it saves you a lot of time. When you go to add your thumbnails, they have to be labeled exactly as your playlists are labeled. And I have a link in my description to the Libretro database files where you can get all your thumbnails. So once you download it and you unzip it, you'll have a folder that looks just like this, Nintendo-Nintendo Entertainment System, just like your playlist file. If you go into this folder, you see that we have a few folders and a file here. If you have this random file, get rid of that, named titles and named snaps, just delete them. All we want is this named box arts folder. So within this folder is where you're going to find your box art. The reason that you see multiples of the same game, because you'll have them for different regions like Europe or USA. So you want to back out to this initial Nintendo-Nintendo Entertainment Center folder. We're going to right click it and copy. Back on your flash drive, we're going to go into the RetroArch folder, down to thumbnails. And then we're going to paste that folder into this area. Something to pay attention to with these thumbnails, your ROMs have to be named exactly like the thumbnail for it to be picked up. So you can see here we have Battletoads in parentheses USA. If we go into our ROMs folder, we have Battletoads USA in parentheses dot zip. So as long as the name is spelled exactly like the thumbnail, it should pick it up and add it to the menu. So now that our thumbnails are in place, let's head back to the AutoBleam games menu. We're going to hold down L2 and select. I'm going to select the Game Boy Color playlist first just to show that I still don't have any box art for Game Boy Color. Once again, L2 and select. I'm going to select the Nintendo playlist. And here you go. Here's a list of all our Nintendo games with box art. You'll see that we got one that wasn't scanned because this game is an unknown game. It probably didn't have a thumbnail to go along with it. Something I want to point out on this menu right here. If you look right below the game title, you'll see what system that it's for and the core that is being used to run it. So Battletoads is an NES or Famicom game running with the AMFD FCEUMM core. Now, if I hit X on this game, it's going to start up right from RetroArch. And here's Battletoads. So hitting start and select takes me right back to the RetroArch menu if I want to make any changes there. So to quit out of the game, I'm going to hit start and select to go into the RetroArch menu. 
I'm gonna back out into the main menu, go to quit retro work. It takes us right back to the playlist where we left off. And you'll see here the menu for the non PS1 games is a little bit stripped down. We don't have game manager, memory card manager, save states, anything like that. You only have the auto bling settings menu. So for the first time, we can now load games directly into RetroArch from the PlayStation Classic menu. So all downloads links for everything I've shown you here will be in my description for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.